Father, as we worship you as the great I am, Lord, I ask that you block out any distractions. I ask that the Holy Spirit speak to us now, Father. Lord, open up your scriptures to us and give us understanding. In the precious and holy name of Jesus, amen. Well, if you'll turn in your Bibles this morning to the book of 1 John, 1 John chapter 1. 1 John chapter 1. Lucy ordered four of these, and they're going to be coming in very soon. And you may say, well, what is this? Or maybe most of you know what this is. This is, I guess you'd call it an evangelistic block, all right? It tells the gospel story, and you'll see them up behind me. You probably all can't see this. I'll do my best. But what, if you can't see it here, they're going to have it up there, all right? So, the first thing we see is that man is in darkness. Look at 1 John chapter 1, verse 5. It says, This is the message which we have heard from him and declared to you that God is light, and in him there's no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him and we walk in darkness, we lie. We don't practice the truth. See, that's what the Ten Commandments shows us. There's no way you're going to keep it. So it shows us our sin. It shows us who we are in the light of God. Listen, to me and to you, I may say, well, man, she's one of the greatest gals I've ever met. I may say he's one of the nicest guys I've ever met. But the mirror shows us the holiness of God and the sinfulness of man. And listen, as much as I want to say, well, he's a real bad sinner, and he's, well, he's not perfect, in God's eyes, friends, listen, he is absolute perfection, and praise God he is, because without perfection, when we get to heaven, that's why there's no disease. That's why we will rejoice at the feet of Christ for all eternity, because there is no sin. We were born into darkness. This is not about being a nice person or not a nice person. We were born into sin. Look at this now. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. However, if we confess our sins... He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. One of the greatest little phrases in, in the Bible is this, but God. Man fell, but God made a way. Man is lost in sin, but God sent his son. That we no longer have to walk in darkness, we can walk in the light. We can spend all of eternity in the darkness, or we can spend all of eternity in the light. Well, you know, that, that's just your opinion. Thank God it isn't. Because, listen, my opinion and a nickel might get me a cup of coffee. Might. But look at what the Bible says. Look at verse 10. If we say we have not sinned, now listen to this. It's not that you disagree with me. Listen, <laughs> you can disagree with me all day, okay? We make him, that's capital H, that's God, Jesus Christ the Son. We make God a liar. And his word is not in us. Last week, our verse was what? In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And we learned last week the debate's over of who is in control, who is sovereign God, and who is over this life of mine because he created it. And he says if we walk in darkness and we don't accept his light, we make him a liar. Now what's one of the greatest verses, I'm sorry, what's one of the greatest phrases I just said? But God. But God sent his son so that the world may be saved. Hebrews says it very simply, without the shedding of blood there is no remission of sins. You can turn it now Adrian. Without the shedding of blood there is no remissions of sin. 
Jesus said this himself, Matthew 26, This is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. Why did the Messiah have to die such a cruel death? You know, why couldn't he come down, do a bunch of miracles, and say, Okay, now believe in me, and everything's good. See, friends, listen, that would make God a liar. Sin is such an affront to God that blood had to be shed. In the, in the Old Testament, it was the blood of bulls and goats and what have you. Every time you sinned, you had to offer up another animal, and the blood had to be shed for my sin. But you see, friends, when Jesus Christ died on the cross, the Bible says this, that the veil was cut in two. That's a heavy veil that separates man from God. In the form that in the tabernacle where the Holy of Holies was, it was behind a very, very thick curtain. Only once a year did the high priest go in and made atonement for the sins of the people. But now we can all enter the Holy of Holies. Now, all can go in and meet with Jesus Christ to confess their sins, to get direction for life. We have the opportunity to go before God to get the support that we need in crisis and terrible situations. Why? Just because I can say a prayer? No, because the blood of Jesus Christ was shed for you and I. Now, look at this, friends, all right? This blood is shed... However, sometimes there's something blocking us from receiving that. Let me share this verse with you. From Romans 14, 3, Therefore let us not judge one another anymore, but rather determine this, not to put an obstacle or a stumbling block in a brother's way. You know, it was Mahatma Gandhi that said, I'd be a Christian if it wasn't for Christians. <laughs> And friends, first of all, we want to walk in the light so that we're not a stumbling block to our fellow brothers and sisters. But let me say something else, all right? When we choose to walk in darkness, there's now a stumbling block between us and God. For some reason, whatever it is, we choose not to be obedient. I'm, I'm here to tell you, obedience to God is not an easy thing. Let me ask you this. Is anything that's really worthwhile in life easy? Anything? See, salvation, here's what we say, it's free. Listen, it costs God his very son. It costs Jesus Christ his very life. That's why the Bible says we've been redeemed. We've been bought back from darkness. But the devil wants to put up a stumbling block. Sometimes, friends, the way we conduct our own lives is a stumbling block between us and God. Sometimes the way we conduct ourselves can be a stumbling block for another person to find the Lord Jesus Christ. Sometimes we have a stumbling block in our spirit. And it says something like this. Well, yeah, I believe Jesus exists. I, I believe he died for my sins. I mean, yeah, I, 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 I believe all that. And kind of like my dad, years and years, that's what he said. I, 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 yeah, I believe it. But it seemed that living water was not flowing through him. He wasn't a bad guy. You know, he wasn't an alcoholic or drug addict or whatever. He was a hard-working fellow, took care of his family. He was a good guy. But it seemed that the living spirit of Jesus wasn't flowing through. But hallelujah, one time... <laughs> When I finally just wouldn't take, uh, yeah, yeah, for an answer. And I said, Dad, no, uh, yeah, yeah, I think, I think so is not an answer, Dad. Then here's what happened. Jesus Christ, he rolled the stone away. You know, that's what it says in the book of Mark. And they said amongst themselves, well, who's going to roll the stone away from the door? But when they looked up, they saw the stone had been rolled away. For it was very large. Do you have anything in your life where it just seems impossible? When we talk about that round stone, we're talking about tons. And this is two ladies talking amongst themselves. The Bible says that they got up on the first day of the week at a very, very early hour. First, first. They made Jesus Christ first before everything else. 
And Jesus Christ rolled away the stone for them. There was no more blockage. There was nothing stopping them from seeing the Savior who had died on the cross for our sins. And when they saw him, no more was it the bloody hands. No longer was it the crown of thorns. Yes, there is the marks of our sin. But he was in all wonderful glory. Listen to this, friends. This is a story from the Old Testament with Elisha. Now, he had the whole Syrian army coming against him. And the servant said, Elisha, we've had it now. Listen to this. And Elisha prayed, open his eyes, Lord, that he may see. Then the Lord opened the servant's eyes, and he looked, and he saw the hills full of horses and chariots of fire all around Elisha. Lord Jesus, from this, Father God, open up our eyes that we might see the truth that I need Jesus and it's not on my terms it's not the way I see it or the way I believe it's the way that he very simply said it all right take up your cross and follow me what does that mean it means that because of the blood of Jesus Christ I confess my sins before God and I receive his full authority and sovereignship in my life. It means he's over everything now. And I ask him to come in. Forgive me of my sin. Take him as my savior. Friends, listen, there's one thing I have to tell you about heaven, about God, and about salvation. It's not a fire insurance policy. It's not about come in so I don't go to hell. It's about come in so you have my whole life. See, when I say, Jesus Christ, take my whole life, that's very different than, Lord, I just don't want to go to a certain place. Yes, that's part of it. But when I say, Jesus, I don't want to go to hell, so come in, I guarantee you, because of the Holy Spirit, you'll start to say, I hope I'm going to heaven. I think I'm going to heaven. I'm pretty sure I'm going to heaven. But God wrote in his holy word, these things are written that you may know that you have eternal life. If I'm at that think so, hope so, I'm not sure, then you know what? That's disobedience to God Almighty. And it needs to be made clear and sure. And listen, I can sit here and spout stuff to you all day long. Only the Spirit of the Lord can open up that door. Only the Spirit of the Lord can roll away the stone that we're convicted of sins and we give our life to Jesus Christ. Oh, but there's glory that awaits. Look at the good news. Now we can stand in the Holy of Holies. Now we can go to the cross with literally everything and anything we need. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Now, Looking at this, look at what God has awaiting for you. Okay? Let me read a verse to you from 1 Peter 2.9. Looking at this. But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for God's own possession, that you may proclaim the excellencies of him who's called you out of darkness, into his marvelous light. See, friends, heaven awaits for all through the blood of Jesus. Oh, I wish everyone would. I wish everyone who says I'm a Christian really was. But you see, friends, Jesus says broad is the way that leads to destruction. In other words, if I live my life because, hey, that's what everybody else is doing, broad is the way to destruction. Narrow is the way to heaven, Jesus said, and few, few find it. In other words, friends, in today's world, guess what? To be a Christian, you gotta be a rebel. You can't go along with the ways of the world. You literally gotta be a rebel. Now look at this, all right? When we receive Christ, Look what he does. He extends his hand down to us 
and pulls us out of the fiery flames. Listen, not only does he pull you out of the fiery flames, but as a Christian, our daily lives, he pulls us up to himself. And he protects us from the things of the enemy. Listen to this, Psalm 18, 16. He reached down from on high and took hold of me. He drew me out of deep waters. He also draws us out of deep trouble and deep flames. You know what he also draws us out of? Now this is one of the most important things. You know what? He draws me out of myself because I can be my own worst enemy. He draws us out of ourselves and being lost in the muck and mire of our sins. So you see, friends, listen. God took a heart that was totally in darkness, totally separated from him, but hallelujah, he makes it brand new. And now this heart that's made new, look at that. First of all, we, we seek God in prayer. Why? He's my heavenly Father. How about, let me ask you something. Anybody need wisdom today? Everybody. All right. Does anybody have, say, listen, man, I need some help in making decisions. Isn't it great we can go to the very one who created this world? Who better could give you wisdom? Mom and dad are great, okay? They're full of years of wisdom, but they're not eternal, and they'd be the first to tell you. Look at this also. He's given us his word. Now, now let me say this, all right? This book, the reason it's so important to bring it to church with you, here's why. God thought it so important that he put it in writing. I could enter into a deal with someone and say, listen, I'll give you $500 for that. Oh, okay, you know. I don't know if you've ever seen this, what, Judge Judy or uh, what's it, Judge Mathis. What's the first thing they ask? Do you have it in writing? And you know what it seems, friends? Every time a person has it in writing, they win. Every time. Every time they have it in writing, they win. God thought this so important, he put it in writing. I can look at it day after day, hour after hour. I can say, well, I think it said, well, we don't have to think. Let's go look at it. See, we don't have to wonder anymore. Now, this one is fellowship. It's hand in hand. No matter who a person is, it's hand in hand. When I first looked at it, I, I thought it was money, that the person was giving money. But you know what? We need to give unto the Lord. Because I'm no longer my own. I'm bought with a price. So I not only give to the Lord what's his in the tithe, but I give my life to him so that others may come to know him. And look at this. That's what the cross on the world is. Do you know, listen friends, this might blow your mind. What is God's plan to save the world? What is his mysterious, huge, otherworldly plan to save the world? You know what it is? <laughs> you and I. God's plan to save the world is you and I. Simply telling others about Jesus Christ. Isn't that what the disciples did? There was no formula. There was no, uh, how do I want to say, uh, a secret playbook or anything like that. The simple message was Jesus Christ and him crucified. And friends, there's no change today. It's exactly the same message from the Apostle Paul and all the disciples. Come unto me, all ye who labor, and I will give you rest, says Jesus. That you may be born again. What does that mean, born again? What does it mean, old things have passed away? Behold, all things have become new. Nicodemus had the same question. He said, now Lord, you mean I'm supposed to go back in my mama's womb and be born? He said, nope, nope, nope. Nicodemus, you're born again of the Spirit. The Spirit at one time that was darkness now becomes light because the Holy Spirit now lives on the inside of all of us when we receive Jesus Christ as our Lord and personal Savior. And you know, friends, one of the worst things we can do 
We hear the message. Probably heard it maybe a thousand times. And sometimes our reaction can be the same a thousand times. But isn't it great that God has given you 1,001? That once again, you've heard the message. You've heard the truth. The question is, what will we do with it? You're not guaranteed this afternoon or tomorrow. No one knows what the future holds. But yet one more time, Jesus Christ is saying, come unto me. Come unto me. And you know, friends, listen. The greatest thing we can do is say, yes, Lord. You don't have to understand it all. You just have to say, yes, Lord. And so we want to take this time right now, friends. I'm going to pray and then Dallas, I guess you lead us in invitation. That as God works on our hearts. And friends, if you're, if you're a Christian this morning and you know that you know. Would you pray with me? Would you pray that if anyone is here today and, and is not sure. That today can be a wonderful day. Father, in the name of Jesus, as we come to you this morning. Lord God, we pray that in the name of Jesus, every knee will bow and every tongue confess that you are Lord of all. Holy God, once again, we've heard from your word. We've heard the truth. And holy God, I pray by your blood that today will be the day of salvation. In Jesus' name, amen. Friends, as we sing this song, we just ask you to come. You may not even know why. That's okay. That's why we're here. But we just ask you to come. I'll pray with you. Listen, if you just want to get before God, take this, what you've heard, and just get before God here at the altar, that's fine. But I, I, I'm here to pray with you. We invite you this day to receive Jesus Christ. We invite you today to walk in the light as he is in the light. We invite you that you become a part of the body of Christ. That when Jesus Christ comes back, he will not say, who are you? But that your name will be written down in glory.